Number six is transportation. The importance of access to parks and recreation is immeasurable. People who live near a park are more physically active, healthy, and have higher levels of psychological well-being. Accessibility can refer to financial resources, transportation, and physical access. Accessibility via transportation could be problematic both in terms of getting to local recreation opportunities as well as the ability to travel to rural locations for outdoor recreational activities. If there are no parks within walking distance, public transportation is limited or there is little family discretionary income, people living in these kind of areas will face significantly more obstacles to using parks than anyone else. Number seven is facilities and environment. Environment, in a way, influences recreation involvement. Physical environment consists of authentic and shaped environment that include recreational infrastructure and transportation. Meanwhile, public situation involves safety and natural environment such as location and weather. And finally, number eight, leisure. Leisure is the time which an individual is free from work or other duties and which may be utilized for the purpose of relaxation, diversion, social achievement, or personal development. Recreational activities can be grouped into five key components, namely, number one, sports and physical recreation. This activity involves physical or sporting activity, such as going to the gym, going swimming, or playing badminton. Number two is countryside recreation. This is anything that is taking part in the countryside area. Examples of this include horse riding, rock climbing, or photography. Number three is home-based leisure. These are activities done in your own home or possibly a friend's house. Examples of these include reading books, listening to music, and watching tele television. Eating, however, is not a leisure activity unless it is part of a package holiday. Number four is arts and entertainment. These are activities conducted outside of your home that entertains you. Examples of these include going to the cinema, or a music concert. And finally, number five is play and activity-based leisure. These are mainly activities that involve children and tend to be fun and entertaining. Examples of these include activities in a children's nursery or kindergarten, such as drawing and coloring, or singing and dancing to a nursery rhyme. Now, we will look into the internal factors. There are eight main factors. Number one is personality. The personality factor determines greatly the way the leisure activities are perceived, understand, and used. The personality, attitude, abilities, forms, and individual behavior with needs and desires for involving in the leisure activities and services. But all behavior is strongly based on age, gender, and education, and also culture. Number two is gender. Men are more likely to feel the constraints of gendered activities than women. Traditionally, female activities such as ballet or aerobics are often seen as prohibitive for female participants because of the fear of being perceived as less than masculine. The gender systems are held in place by social norms that prescribe acceptable gender-related expressions and behavior. Gender norms thus act upon individuals and shape their standing and options in the world and their functions within institutions and communities in which they exist. Number three is skills and knowledge. Skills and knowledge can become constraining factors that affect an individual's preferences for or interest to, to be involved in an activity. Sorry. Skills and knowledge can become constraining factors that affect an individual's prefer preferences. Preference. 
Number three is skills and knowledge. Skills and knowledge can become constraining factors that affect an individual's preference or interest to be, to be involved in an activity. A person, for example, may not feel he or she is skilled at an activity and as a result, we choose not to participate. Number four is age. As people age, their leisure preferences and patterns will also change. Children experience a tremendous amount of growth and try different leisure activities. As people enter and move through adulthood, family has a major influence on leisure participation. In an individual's later years, physical abilities and social elements are key factors in leisure. Number five, if ethnic and cultural influence. Many cultural factors prohibit the use of recreation activities and programs. Some may not feel welcome because they feel the activities plan. Sorry, again, repeat. Number five is ethnic and cultural influence. Many cultural, cultural factors Number five is ethnic and cultural influence. Many cultural factors prohibit the use of recreation facilities and programs. Some may not feel welcome because they view activities as being planned for others or that their own religious or personal values do not match those of others. Given that not all forms of discrimination have been erased, parks and recreation services need to be accessible, affordable, safe, culturally relevant and welcoming in order to meet the needs of all racial and ethnic groups. Number six is motivation. Motivation refers to a set of need which cause a person to participate in the recreation activity. It involves a number of factors that can be grouped into pull factors and push factors. Pull factors are tangible things that draw visitors to a destination which include people, places, and activities. Examples of pull factors are friends, relatives, celebrities, scenic area, recreational events, and cultural festivals. Push factors, on the other hand, are intangible things or forces that come within us, such as needs, motivation, and way of thinking. Examples of push factors are adventure, challenge, escape, self-discovery, prestige, rest, and relaxation. Tourist motivations are commonly referred to as the pushing factors because they are formed internally and drive individuals to visit or engage in certain recreational activities. Here are some examples of pull and push factors in recreation. Again, pull factors are tangible factors as they are quantifiable or can be measured. Meanwhile, push factors are intangible and they are not quanti quantifiable, thus cannot be measured. This slide shows some examples of motivation that can influence the selection of recreational activities. Number seven is attitude. An attitude can be defined as a positive or negative evaluation of people, objects, events, activities, ideas, or just about anything in your environment. Attitudes toward behavior is a person's overall evaluation of the behavior. It involves two components working together, namely, belief about consequences of the behavior, and corresponding positive or negative judgments about features of the behavior. For example, if I were to engage in this particular behavior, will the results be desirable? This kind of evaluation will then influence your perceptions and values. Number eight is behavior. Behavior refers to how a person acts specially, to or at something such as recreation sites or someone. Human behavior 
refers to the range of behaviors exhibited by humans and which are influenced by culture, attitudes, emotions, values, and ethics. There are differences between attitude and behavior. This can be drawn clearly on the following grounds. Attitude is defined as a person's mental tendency, which is responsible for the way he or she thinks or feels for someone or something. Behavior implies the actions, moves, conduct, or functions of an individual or group towards other persons. A person's attitude is mainly based on the experiences gained during the course of his or her life and observations. On the other hand, the behavior of a person relies on the situation. Attitudes is a person's inner thoughts and feelings or mindset, as opposed to behavior which expresses a person's attitude. The way of thinking and feeling is reflected by a person's attitude. On the contrary, a person's conduct is reflected by his or her behavior. Attitude is defined by the way we perceive things, whereas behavior is ruled by social norms. Attitude is a human trait, but behavior is an inborn attribute. Well, that will be all for the lecture today. I do hope that you have gained some information regarding factors that can influence recreation involvement through this lecture. Please do some additional readings on the topics of factors influencing recreation activity involvement by searching for more information online. With that, I end my lecture and I hope to see you again.